Hey, Shalom. You know, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory. I want to take Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rahakadash. That's our Heavenly Father and His Son, the true names are Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, whom I learned the truth from. And peace and salutations to Yaki and to the brothers that are sincerely teaching this truth and preaching Yahweh Shai. You know, and uh, salutation to the elect. And uh, this is going to be a, you know, should be a quick lesson. You know, um, me and the brothers, a brother in the camp spoke about something, you know, this past weekend. Now, I ain't going to get, like, really ain't going to get into it, but this what just sparked me to uh, do this lesson. And basically, this lesson is going to be, you know, basically fulfilling your life, right? Whatever you do in this lifetime, you just fulfilling your lot. Whatever the Most High has set up for you to be, that's what you're going to be. And it ain't nothing that we had control over, right? This is before we were born, you know? The thing that you see us doing right now, whether you are prophesying, you know, you were meant to be a prophet, right? Just like the Lord told Jeremiah, right? And I would get that, you know, whether you were set up to be a uh, person, you know, that comes into this truth and you leave, right? You get disenchanted. You don't believe anymore. That was all supposed to happen, right? Or you were just, just born to be a two-third, right? The most I set up all these things, you know, to happen and to play out. Right, and they will play out, and you can't do nothing to change that. There is no free will, no, you don't control your own destiny. But let me start off with this Daniel 12 and 13. But go thy way, he said, But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Right, so this is most I'm talking to Daniel. He said, go that way to the end be. Right? He says, for thou shalt rest. What's that talking about? Rest, not as in a physical sleep. Right? That we take, you know, when you're tired. But it's talking about death. Right? Because when you uh, read about the account with Yahweh Shai and Lazarus, he told the disciples that Lazarus was asleep. But then later on, he had to, you know, uh, touch on that point where he was talking about was sleep. He said, look, Lazarus is dead. You know, so that's what that's talking about. It says, but go thy way to the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. So this is reincarnation. Basically, because, you know, Daniel... He ain't a thousand, two thousand, you know, years old, right? He was talking about when he was going to die, he was going to come back and he was going to stand in his lot, meaning what he was set up to do. And Daniel was a prophet. So Daniel today is prophesying today because we're in the end days, right? But Daniel didn't have no control over that. He was told what he was going to be doing. He didn't know. It's like the Lord told Jeremiah that he set him up a, a, to be a prophet unto the nations, right? In the womb. In the womb, you don't have control over nothing. You know? You just in there chilling. You don't have no power. You don't have no say so. It says, Jeremiah 1 and 5 said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So before the Most High formed him, he already knew him. He knew his spirit. He already knew what he was going to have Jeremiah doing. Right? And what he was going to make Jeremiah in that lifetime. He said, Before thou came as forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Right? He said, I sanctified thee. I ordained thee. He set him up to be that. Not Jeremiah. Jeremiah had no power over him becoming a prophet. He didn't make himself a prophet. The Most High made him that. 
in the womb, before the womb, right? This is just like with Jacob and Esau. When you read in Romans 9 and, 9 and 11, it says, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Right, the children not yet being born. Jacob and Esau. You can go read about that in Genesis, the 24th chapter. Right, Jacob, which is the progenitor and the forefather of the tribe, the 12 tribes of Israel, right, which consists of the Negroes, the Latinos, and the Native Americans. And Esau being the father, the progenitor of the, the, the Edomites, the Caucasians, the right race, right? The so-called white race. Right, it says, for the children not yet being born, neither have done any good or evil, so they didn't do anything, right? But Jacob, he was chosen to be that righteous seed in Esau's the wicked. Esau, in Romans 19, Romans 9 and 13, right, it says right here that Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. It would just set up like that. You know, they didn't they didn't do anything. It says that the purpose of the most high come to election might stand. So they were chosen to be this. They didn't choose it themselves. It said not of works for the film that call it. It's of the most high. Say so that that how all that was gonna play out with Jacob and Esau. That was the, that 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 specific role was chosen for them. Like a director of a movie, he tells you, look, you know, I want you to do this and that. You're going to be the bad guy, right? You're going to come in and you're going to do this and that, right? He can't decline it. If he, you know, he, he it's nothing that he can do. He has to play that role. It's like the same thing with the good guy, right? The director of the movie, he comes in and he hands out the roles. That's what the Most High does to the spirit, right? That's what the Most High does to us. You know, so we ain't we ain't doing nothing but playing our role. Uh, let me see something. Uh, in Edris. nine. And 22 it says, let the multitude perish then which was born in vain. Right, let the multitude perish that was born in vain. Right, if you look at it, two thirds was born in vain. They were born just to be destroyed. They were born just to be wicked in this lifetime and to be rebellious, to not to come unto the Lord, to not believe, to not have faith. And his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. They were set up to deny this truth, to not accept it, and to be destroyed. Right? So they were just born just to die. That's their lot. The two thirds will never come to this truth. Right? And endure to the end and just, you know, keep the faith, right? They. They they won't they won't really be with this thing. Their 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 lot is to be into this world, and to care for the things of this world, or there may be music, right? And be a rapper or a singer. You want to play sports, right? Or you might just want to just do something else. But you know, you just care about this place so much. This that's the two thirds lot, but the righteous, the elect, their their focus is gonna be on Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. You know, but it says, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, and let my grape be kept in my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. All right, so uh, let's get Jeremiah ten and twenty three. It says, uh, O Yahweh, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Right, so things that we do on the daily, 
whether it be pushing the thread out, you know, you're doing videos, you're studying, you know, you're keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, or whether you being a wicked individual, whether you being a homosexual, whether you being an adulterer, whether you smoking, you know, marijuana, you know, you're a damn crackhead, <laughs> you know, any of that. It ain't you that's doing it. You were set up to be that person. All right, before you were even born, it was already said you were going to be a damn crackhead. <laughs> you know? Or you were going to be a prophet. Or you were going to be part of the elect. You wasn't going to taste of the, of the judgment. All of that was set up. Right? You had no power. You had no say so. And you can't change anything about it. You're not directing your own steps. The most I have the, do- the, the director. He's directing your steps. He's directing this movie. This is his movie. We just playing in it, bro. We just fulfilling our roles and fulfilling our lives. Just like with Judas. Right? Judas bet- betrayed the Lord. But he was already set up for him to do that. He couldn't change the storyline. Matter of fact, let's just go to that. This is John 13. And, uh... John 13 and... I started 18. Uh, I'll start at 16. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. Right? I ain't speaking to all of you. I know who I have chosen. Right? He said that, have I chosen, he told the disciples, have I not chosen you all, but one of you is the devil. And he was speaking to Judas. He said, but look, he said, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me had lifted up his heel against me. What scripture is that? Psalms 41 and 9. He said, yea, my own familiar friend in whom I have trusted, which did eat of my bread, had lifted up his heel against me. Right? And he was talking about Judas. Yahweh was, was talking about Judas, so... Judas had to fulfill that. Verse 19 says, Now I tell you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. When Yahweh had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. So yeah, I already knew the deal. He already knew what was up. All right. Yeah, I already knew that Judas was going to be the one that was going to turn him over. All right. He said, then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. So they were like, damn, what's going on? Who are we talking about? You know? Now, there was leaning on Yahweh bosom, one of his disciples, Right, whom he how shall loves, which was John. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he would ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Yahweh shot breath, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Yahweh shall answer, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped a sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. So shit, he gave him a sign, look, it's him right there, Judas. And after the sop, Satan answered unto him. Then Yahweh shy, then said Yahweh shy unto him, that thou doest do quickly. You see, so it was already set up for Judas to betray the Lord. Right? This is all prophecy. Everything that we're doing today is all prophecy. The children of Israel waking up and prophesying, remember who they are. Prophecy. Right? The two thirds being the two thirds. Prophecy. Esau being the wicked, the most wicked in the world. Prophecy. You know, so everybody just 
back here in the end days, fulfilling their lots, right? Whatever you may be doing, you know, you know, because it's truth is not going to be for everybody. Everybody's lot is to not be a prophet. You know, everybody's lot is not to make it out of this place, you know. You know, so, you know, that's just the, uh, that was the lesson, you know. It's just something quick to touch on. So with that, you know what I'm saying, Shalom.